السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين So we're still in the series which is revelation through the lens of the seerah and we said we are now in the year 4 or 5 in the Mecca period last time we discussed some surahs which Allah Taala revealed to the companions and the main purpose of this series is just to show you how did Sahaba receive the revelation in that situation and we'll, found, we'll, we'll find out that in Mecca period where the majority of Quran revealed to Rasulullah there is no no many commands of Allah in Mecca period the commands the majority of commands in the Quran is in Medina period that's the main point of this series that it's Islam is about concepts is about understanding good understanding of your religion when a hardship when you face hardship how do you interpret this hardship according to the Quranic concept when you worship Allah Taala, all these concepts of fear hope love reliance certainty and when you deal with the relationship with others that's that's also one of the main themes in Mecca Quran and also the difference between Iman and Kufr that's a big theme that what give the early Muslim identity they enhance their identity by this we are Muslims and the last thing also is the hereafter. Dunya is just a temporary life. So they always look at this. So may some of the early companions, they die and they didn't see any victory or anything. And Allah said, as we said last time, This is a big success. Because it's not about, it's about when you die. What's your concepts? What's your belief? That's the main thing. Okay, now we are in year five and there is, you all know that in Syria there is a migration to Abyssinia. And around 100 companions, they migrated to Abyssinia. Some of them are families like Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and his wife Asma' bint Umayz, like Uthman radiallahu anh, and his wife Ruqayya bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and others so before this there is a surah many maybe many of us memorize this surah or recite it at least every single Jumu'ah which is surah al-kahf surah al-kahf is revealed in the year four or five very early and surah al-kahf is about four stories and there is a context behind this that the Quraysh the people of the Mecca, they want to find something. They can stop the da'wah of Rasulullah Wasallam. So they sent two people, and Nadr ibn al-Harith and Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, to the Jewish in Medina. And they said, these are the people of the book. We are illiterate. We don't know anything. Maybe they can give us something we can stop this message of Rasulullah So they went there and the people of the book told them, ask Rasulullah about the people of the cave and ask him about a traveler, a king in the history, he traveled around the world, which is Dhul Qarnayn. So they came back and they asked Rasulullah Wasallam. And Rasulullah said, he said, I'm just waiting for revelation. Rasulullah is just a human being, but what makes him unique is this revelation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah revealed Surah Al-Kahf, told them about these two stories, and he add another two stories. 
Surah Al-Kahf is important in the early revelation and it's so important in our time. Why in our time? Because Rasulullah sallallahu said that if you recite the, the first 10 ayat in Surah Al-Kahf when the Dajjal come then Allah will protect you from Dajjal. The meaning here is not about recitation itself. It's about the meaning of Surah Al-Kahf. It's about the main message of Surah Al-Kahf. Why is Surah Al-Kahf related to Dajjal? And why we recite Surah Al-Kahf on Friday? And why it revealed to Rasulullah the early revelation? We try to make connection between these two, these things. Friday, Dajjal, early revelation, and the four stories in Surah Al-Kahf. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. It's one of the five surahs in Quran start with Alhamdulillah, which is Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-An'am, Al-Kahf, Sabah, Fatir, five. And the order of these five in Quran also is unique. Fatiha is in the beginning. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then in the first quarter of Quran, Surah Al-An'am. Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala al-dhulmati wal-nur. And then go to another quarter, which is the half of the Quran, you'll find Surah Al-Kahf. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdi al-kitab. Then you go to the last quarter of Quran, You'll find two surahs together, Saba, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard, and Fatir, Alhamdulillah, Fatir al-samawat. So Hamd is in the beginning of the Quran, in the first quarter, in the half, in the last quarter. This surah has four stories, four different stories. All these stories never repeated in Quran. It's only in Surah Al-Kahf. And in the middle of these stories, after the first two stories, and before he continue the other two, there is just one ayah about shaitan. When Allah Taala command the malaika to prostrate to Adam and Iblis, he reject. كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه ودريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو. And there is a purpose that Iblis here in the middle. Because all these four stories is about fitan. It's about type of fitna that any Muslim can face. And the one who is behind all the fitnas is shaitan. The first story is about the fitna of power. When there's a few young people, they saw the corruption and people associating others with God. There is no one can say the truth. If, and they stand up, إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا you could say, إِذْ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا When they say. But instead he say, when they stand and say رَبُّنَا Why they stand? Stand here is just indicate that there is times in the history you should stand before the corruption and say the truth. And Allah wa Taala will make you from those Allah mentioned their names in this book till the day of judgment. The first fitna is about power. So those mala, those governors of that city in the story of the people of the cave, they want all the masses just to follow them. So these young people, they say no. So they try to kill them. So they run away to the cave. This is the fitna of power. It means when you have the fitna of Sultan, 
that you can't, you should say the truth and you don't have anything to, so you, you run away from this, as we'll explain. The second fitna is a fitna of wealth, which is the story of the man with two gardens. Allah gave him every type of wealth. And he's, he, what's the result? He become arrogant. And you said there's no hereafter. If there is hereafter, I will be in the best position. And bear in mind that love is that story is in the form of conversation. That's very important. The third story is about the fitna of knowledge. Khadr and Musa. The main theme here is. Oh, human being, you know very little. So when you discover anything, know your limit. There's many things in Qadr you can't understand. And the last fitna is fitna of when Allah Taala give ability to the Dhul Qarnayn, أَتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا anything to build a very strong civilization then he utilized this ni'mah to spread the truth around the world this is the four fitness before we say the main lessons here in sahaba in the early revelation after they start to torture them and they face a lot of challenges and difficulties yasir and sumayya they killed in the early revelation. Now they heard about the story that some people, they can't convey the message, so they go to another place. That's an indication of migration also. That's why after that few months, they migrated to Abyssinia. And there is few ayat also in the early revelation talk about the hijrah fi sabilillah, to migrate in the sake of Allah, just to prepare Muslim for that. Okay, before these four stories, why Dajjal? Dajjal is in the end of the time. Rasulullah said, this is the biggest fitna that he will came in the end of the time. And Allah Ta'ala give him so much power that he can just look at the sky and talk to the cloud and the cloud will rain. He come to a dry land and then that dry land become green. This is so much fitna. Because this is the attributes of Allah. Wa Allah give some of his attributes which is ihya and mawimata, which is bring think life and also to say to something die and he dies straight away. He give it to two people in the history. Number one is Isa, Al-Masih ibn Maryam. Masih, what's his miracles? Yuhyi al-mawta bi-idhnillah. The Isa, one of his miracles, he say, Bismillah, and the dead people, they become come alive. And the second one is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. He also do the same thing. And both of them called Al-Masih. Al-Masih ibn Maryam, Al-Masih al-Dajjal. The real Messiah and the false Messiah. But Al-Masih ibn Maryam, both this power from Allah, not from them, not from Al-Masih ibn Maryam, not from Al-Masih al This is from Allah. Allah gave to them for a test. But al he always say anything he will do he say Bismillah this is not from me that's from Allah but Dajjal he didn't say that that's the fitna now and Al-Masih ibn Maryam is the one who will kill Al-Masih al-Dajjal the true Messiah will kill the false Messiah. 
So when the false Messiah now is big fitna, how is this? That man, the Prophet, who came with the same thing, but he always said, this is from Allah, he will kill that false one. And he will kill him in the same place also in Palestine, where the Isa alayhi salam were, live here also. So let's look at this analogy. Another analogy. Isa is the last prophet before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Dajjal will come in the end of the time. So both Isa, al-Masih ibn Umar, al-Masih ibn Dajjal is in the end of history, in the end of the time. Allah wa ta'ala created Adam from dust, from clay, and, Hawa, and then created all the human beings after him from mingle of fluid. Then Allah broke this rule, this sunnah, in Isa ibn Maryam in the end of the time. And he will send also Masih al-Dajjal in the end of the time. Why in the end of the time? Because in the end of the time, there will be something happen. Number one, Allah ta'ala will give ability to a human being to discover many things in this universe. Because this universe is just for a test. Allah will destroy, destroy all this universe before, hereafter. Because it has, has one purpose, just for test. So before that test finish, Allah will give ability to a human being to discover many things in the earth, in the sky, in the planet, all of these things. They will discover a lot. So that a lot of discovery, they will lead a lot of people to think, oh, we know so much. They will lead them to worship science. Look what science do. Instead of look at to glorify the Lord who created everything, the shaitan will come here and say, no, it's just science. So in the end of the time, science will become something very big. So Dajjal will come and say, look, I can change all of this. So those people who have very, they don't have Iman, they will follow Dajjal easily. That's number one. Number two, in the end of the time, because the test now will finish, there will be so much, dunya will be everywhere. Majority of people, they become rich. The money will become everywhere, like Rasulullah Wasallam said. See, now business is very easy for many people. There is a type of business now, even our grandfather, they can't think about it. You just need laptop, and you type and you do your business. That's it. What's your job? You don't need to go to university. You don't need to graduate from anything. It's just some skills, internet, laptop, and that's it. So that's dunya which will open to the people. People now will be far away from religion. They need dunya. Anything can bring me dunya, I will follow. Dajjal will bring them all the dunya they wish. That's why they will follow them. Third, in the end of the time, the real ilm of, of revelation will be very little. Those scholars, they know the revelation very well. When I say revelation, it doesn't mean to memorize the revelation. That's not the knowledge I talk about. You can memorize revelation and you know nothing about revelation. Memorization is not this knowledge Rasulullah SAW talk about. It's about to know the revelation and to act upon the revelation. Even knowing itself is not enough. It's knowing and act upon. Then when people see you, look. كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. This man is just implement what Allah ta'ala command in the Quran. That will be very little. So people will look for some false scholars. 
And those false gods, they will make everything easy for them. Till the Dajjal come, and many people will they follow them. Adhan? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So, that's why Dajjal is in the end of the time. And Dajjal, it just comes from Dajjal, that he will just falsehood. So if you, of anyone, is that type of people, which his main purpose in this life is just dunya. I want more and more. I don't care about anything. When the Dajjal came to them, and he said, I am God. And there is very obvious evidence. Let just look at his eyes, look at his appearance. You will find out straight away what's this. If a person can do all of this, why he don't fix his eye? Why don't fix his appearance? Very obvious. But when your ultimate purpose just I don't care, I need more. Whoever give me more, I will follow him. That's the mentality of the people who follow the Jal. Why Yawmul Jumu'ah? Because Surah Al-Kahf, Yawmul Jumu'ah, of the Day of Judgment. Rasulullah said, every single morning in Jumu'ah, that all the creation waiting for the hereafter to start, except jinn and ins. Jumu'ah is the beginning of hereafter. So we should every single week, we remind ourselves, maybe this is the end of the time. Maybe this is the end of the time. So recite Surah Al-Kahf with reflection. Now these four stories, the first story is about a people of the cave. The people of the cave, they stand before this aggressive, this zalim, and they say no. We worship only Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. But because they can't do so much, they went to the cave and they sleep there for a long time. Rasulullah told us that also when Dajjal came, a young man who will stand before that Dajjal and he will say, I know you are a false god. So that's here indication of young people in the end of their time if young people hold the book of Allah wa and steadfast in the path of Allah wa those young people can do a lot so when Allah described the cave when these people went to the cave he say, come, let us go to the cave. When we come to the cave, Allah will spread the mercy upon us. Spread. Look, cave is very narrow. Very narrow place in the top of mountain. They, Allah used the word yanshur, which is, means spread. Spread the mercy. What does that mean? And he said, وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِرْفَقَةً Mirfaqa is a nice place when you have a nice living room and you have a nice place there. That's not the description of the cave. Why he said that? Because it's about how you look at the situation. When they compare between that cave where they can protect their religion and that city, which is full of desires, full of temptation, full of everything anyone look for when they compare for it. But this is all against Allah, Allah's commands. When they compare, they look at the cave like the best place in the world. They look at the cave as a very wide place, very nice place. So that's very important lesson here in this. It means in the end of the time, you'll face a lot of challenges, a lot of... Sometimes that challenges can lead you just to be alone with few company. Because when you have a lot of company as, as people will follow, Dajjal, you don't want that, you're just alone. 
It's just like you are in the cave. However, that cave, it just you will feel it's the best place in the world because it protects your religion. Sometimes the cave could be a prison. Like in a prison is like a cave, very narrow. But Yusuf look at the prison in different angle. It's a place he can spread the da'wah. Ya sahibay sijni a'arbabun mutafarriquna khayrun amillahu al-wahidul qahar. A cave sometimes can be a state of poverty where you are have a high status in a company but they just need your signature for something you certainly know it's haram. Either leave your job or sign for this contract. So you refuse and they kick you out from the company. You are in a cave. But cave for you will be the, the best place because you protect your religion. And that cave, Surah Al-Kahf, is in the middle of the Mus'haf. You just open the middle of the Mus'haf, there, there is a cave in the middle of the Mus'haf. Anyone who feels this fitan, and he can't do so much like Dhul Qarnayn, he can't even have conversation like the man with two gardens, then come to that cave you will find mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That's the main theme here. There's a lot of lessons in different angles. But, but we are in this context of Dajjal. And then he go to the second story, which is the man with two gardens. Bear in mind that this story is in a form of conversation. It's conversation. Why? Because this conversation can happen any time between you and anyone who look at the wealth at something very huge. So you will remind him or her. Conversation here indicate that this will happen all the time. That one of your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, they look, Allah Taala blessed him with a lot of wealth and he forget the purpose of this life. He tried to utilize this wealth against the commands of Allah So now it's your now job, it's your duty to have that conversation. The first story, they stand before that governor and then they run away from that city. But now this is easier for you, it's just a conversation. You just need to remind people in the end of the time that what's look at the one who blessed you with the ni'am. He gave us and you utilize these ni'mas for something against him. And then that belief, he opened the eyes of that disbelief. Open your eyes. One day you can, Allah can destroy all this in one moment. And it happened. So that conversation to give us in the end of the time, time, you'll find a lot of conversation like this. Don't remain silent. Speak. That's your duty. Only open the eyes of these people. Wake them up. And this is very easy job. And he straight away after this Second story, he said, "Innama mathalu al-hayat al-dunya kama in anzalna hu min al-sama." Give analogy of the dunya. Dunya is just raining for a dry land. A dry land is like dead. The rain it it rains, and then Allah Taala bring it life for a few months, and then dry again. This is the life. So don't make this fitna or temptations is block your eyes. And then he went to the third story. You can realize here that the third story and the fourth story with no comments between them. But after first story, there is a lot of comments. And after the second story, also a lot of comments. So for example, after the first story, he said, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيمِ 
He told us the significance of good company in the end of the time. You know, these young people, they are very few. How can you steadfast in the end of the time? Good company. What else? To remind yourself constantly of the day of judgment. Jannah and Nar. And then, he mentioned Jannah and Nar. After the second story also, he mentioned the allergy of dunya is just temporary. And then he mentioned Jannah and Nar and the hereafter again. Now we come to the third story. Khadr and Musa is about that, oh human being, what you know is very little. Allah Taala has absolute knowledge. And he gave us a special knowledge, it's just a knowledge about Qadr. Why the knowledge about Qadr here? Because in the end of the time, when the people now run, out, run towards the dunya, towards the Dajjal and Dajjal, they don't care about anything. When they listen to any reminder, they say, look, they try to make Qadr as an excuse. Allah Taala told them that this Qadr has a lot of secret behind it. Sometimes you run towards something, you think it's good, but it's bad for you. Let me give you an example, since Allah said. And he gave us example for three stories. Khadr and Musa, they made three journeys. The second story, the man with gardens, it's conversation. But the third story is in a form of journey. Three journeys. Why they travel? Every time, fantalaqa, fantalaqa. Come, and they go. Why Khadr doesn't say to Musa, sit down, and you'll give him a lecture in this special knowledge? That's it. Why come with me? And one time in the, in the middle of the sea, then the next time they went to the sand, the next time they went to the village. Why all of this? You can sit down and give a lecture, profound lecture about all of this. That to told us, this type of knowledge, that the wisdom of Qadarullah, you can't learn this type of knowledge only in the books, even in the Quran itself. Unless you go through an experience in your life, then you will understand. That's why fantalaqa, it means they go through experience. When you go through experience in your life, then you will understand the wisdom and sometimes Allah will show you the wisdom later in your life. But sometimes you never know the wisdom till you die. So you should say to yourself, no, there is a wisdom behind that. Because I saw it in myself, in that experience, in that story. So the first story is he showed us the wisdom. The Musa and Khadir, they just, you know the story and the ship. I will make the story in a different way. Imagine now you are in a place where you are in the middle of the, your car is broken in a village and there is no way to have any other car and a one man come with a very nice car and said, come with me. So you say, oh, this man is mashallah ajeeb. And you straight away start to make something in the leather or in the seats of that car. Everyone will say, what's this? He give you this favor and you try to make something wrong with his car. After a while, a car you and they want to take that very nice car. Look at this. Oh, we don't need this. Go. The driver now will thank you so much. Now he know the wisdom. That's one of the, our life. We have a lot of this. In, when, when the COVID-19, the corona, there's many people, they lost their jobs. So suddenly, 
they kick him out from the company. That's a hole in that ship. What's this? After a while, I know some people personally, they say, Alhamdulillah, Corona is one of the ni'amullah. Why? Because that person I know personally, after that, when they kick them out from the company, he found out that working from her home is the best type of job. And now he, then after one, two years, he earned three times double his salary. While he is with his children, just with the laptop at home. So now he said, oh, kick me out from that. Alhamdulillah. Look at that hole in that ship. After a while, Allah will open your eyes for the wisdom. It means sometimes you will not understand something. Look, before you thought, what's this? Why this happened to me? Imagine the people of the ship. Why this happened to me? Us. Who did that? We are good people. And after a while, when that king refused to take that ship, they say, oh, Allah blessed us with that hole. That's story for us. How many times we did the same thing. And Allah showed us the wisdom later. However, he didn't show us sometimes the wisdom. Now the belief come now. Because in the second and third story, Allah didn't show them the wisdom. You know, these parents, they lost their child in the second story. They lost their child. So if you want to understand the story of Khadr, just instead of Khadr, this is Qadarullah. Khadr is the Qadar. So when he says فَقَتَلَهُ it means they lost their child. He play outside, there's a car accident, he died. Now the parents regret. Allah said he is about to become adult. And he did very bad thing to them. He was aggressive. If he become adult, they will make his, their life is impossible. Then Allah gave them a pious child. I'm pretty sure that these parents, in their own life, they said, Alhamdulillah, with this blessing, but if that child now alive, you understand? Because they don't know wisdom. They didn't see it. That's us also. We go through experience. We don't know what's the wisdom behind that. But we as a believers, Allah show us a lot also from this. We should say, definitely, Allah is Hakim. So this type of fitna is, in the end of the time, is very important. Why? Because in the end of the time, there is a lot of tribulations. If you don't have the knowledge of Qadr and Taslim and to submit, you'll get in trouble. If you see the incident in Gaza, and many people, they lost their families in one moment. That's a lot of tribulation. If you don't have that type of knowledge, the wisdom of Allah behind everything, you will lost. That's why you need this in the end of the time. In the end of the time will be a lot of earthquakes, like Rasulullah Sam said. If every time you say, why this happened, what? There is a wisdom behind everything. So because a lot of tribulation, you need this story. And when Allah starts this story, the Khadr and Musa, he described Khadr, which symbolized the Qadr. Abdan atainahu. رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علم رحمة and علم and رحمة is first علم is second it means all the أقدار الله is out of mercy if you know that if you can know his ultimate wisdom you know it's out of mercy and out of absolute knowledge and in the end of the story he said, Rahmatam. Wakan Abu Huma Salihan. Farada Rabbuka Yestahwe, Rahmatam Mirabbik. Farada Rabbuka Yestahriza Kenzahuma. 
فأراد ربك أن يبلغ أشدهم ويستخرج كنزهما رحمة من ربك He start with رحمة and end with رحمة to tell us this is out of mercy in the day of judgment Allah will expose all this wisdom behind all this tribulation the last story is the story of the Qarnayn Dhul Qarnayn we know nothing about this just Dhul Qarnayn in tafsir we don't go with this Mufassirin they brought a lot from the people of the book who is this but Allah said Dhul Qarnayn but we can extract something from Dhul Qarnayn. Maybe his knowledge is the knowledge of dunya and knowledge of akhirah. Dhul Qarnayn. He's the one who believe in Allah in certainty. And he utilized the ilm of dunya in the best way to please Allah. So this Dhul Qarnayn, it means there's a balance here between dunya and akhirah between all the materials and all the unseen. Dhul Qarnayn did also three journeys. One journey to the west, one to the east, and one, it seems, in the middle to those people. And Allah wa he, the, the, the longest story is the last story, when he went to those people. The main lessons of the Qarnayn is two. Two main lessons in this context. There's a lot of lessons. One of the main lessons is, O oh Muslims, in the end of it, there will be a lot of discovery in everything, in science. In, you should take all these discoveries and utilize it to spread the message of Islam. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا means all this science, geography, astronomy, all these things. Dhul Qarnayn, take all this uloom and utilize it to spread the message. That's our duty. If you are, you can't do anything like the people of the cave in the beginning, the ummah in whole should be, follow, should follow the Dhul Qarnayn. And you know, the longest story of these three stories is that he came to a people, Allah described them, لا يكادون يفقهون قولا. Some of us three interpret they can't uh, deal with, they can't uh, uh, speak very well, so under Dhul Qarnayn, but that's not true because Dhul Qarnayn understand them very well. Because as we read from the conversation, Dhul Qarnayn understand everything. And this also, لا يكادون is very profound statement in Arabic. What's that? Let us look here. Dhul Qarnayn, he found these people and they said to him, we will give you a lot of money just build something between us and those Barbanian people. This, those people, يأجوج ومأجوج, we can't do anything. They always attacked us. Dhul Qarnayn said, I don't want your money. I will build this, but you help me, help me. You are the one who will build it, not me, not my soldiers. Why he did that? Because he realized something here. He realized that these people, they have a problem. Their problem is they don't have willpower. They are hopelesses. They're just waiting for a stranger to give them, to give him their money, to protect them from someone else. Why they don't do it by yourself? And they have a lot of money because they offer that for Dhul Qarnayn. They have a lot of sources, resources. They have a copa and they have uh, iron in their, in, their, in their land because as Allah said, Atuni Zubar al Hadid, Atuni Ufriq Ali, it means from their land. And they have a lot of people because they are the one who built this. What's their problem? Their problem is just like a problem of our ummah nowadays. Our ummah has a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of sources, oil, gas, copper, iron, gold, everything. 
and we're waiting for someone else, give them our money to protect us from someone else. لا يكادون يفقهون قولا. And bear in mind that these people are non-Muslims. The point here is, if the Ummah follow the Qarnayn and become Ummah number one, then the Ummah then will help anyone regardless of their religion. Anyone who need help, we are here. So this is the four stories that we need it nowadays. That's why I elaborated a bit longer, this exception in this series, because we need Surah Al-Kahf nowadays. And Surah Al-Kahf, if you... Now I will talk to you in the end of this. You know this, all this materialism. If you have so attachment to this, Ask yourself one day, if Dajjal came, will you follow that Dajjal? Can you live without internet for one week? Ask yourself. That's so much attachment is not a good sign. Because when Dajjal comes, he will tell you, whatever you want, I will give you. If you can't then live without internet one day, one week, if we can't live without a lot of this material, we have to. Reduce that attachment. Otherwise, it's dangerous. So this Surah Al-Kahf. After this Surah and some Surahs, the companions migrated to Abyssinia. And they came to the Najashi, Christian. And you know the story. The Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, he gave his speech. What is amazing in that speech that Ja'far summarized the message of Islam where there is no commands except Salah. There's no too much commands. So what's the commands that Ja'far mentioned? He emphasized that he sent us a messenger. We know his lineage, we know his honesty. And he command us of Salah and maintain kinship. Subhanallah. It's one of the main messages of Quran. Maintain kinship. That to be good to your relatives, to your neighbors, to the poor people, to the people in need. If that's the message of Islam that, that Ja'far summarized to an Najashi. And then he recites Surah Maryam. It means there is a type of knowledge in Quran you need to can deal with all the societies. So that's why Surah Maryam is one of this very important surah, especially for those people who live here and want to debate with the people of the book. Surah Maryam is one of the most important surahs. So if you want to go in that side, you have to focus on some certain surahs. So, inshallah, next time we'll talk about some what after that Abyssinia. What surahs descend to Rasulullah sallam in the year six, where the Umar ibn al-Khattab and Hamza ibn Abi ibn Abd al-Muttalib they convert to Islam. So what's after Abyssinia? And in Abyssinia, there are some people they stay there for fifteen years. Our scholars said that Islam enter Africa before. It entered the Medina al Munawwara. Islam came to Africa before Medina al Munawwara. That's a seed there in Africa, which is this continent. Is, is a, there's a big story. If we talk about history, inshallah. I have a, a series in Masjid al Fuqan every, every Wednesday about identity series, a long series, and one of the main themes is history, some lessons from history. We'll talk about some profound thing about Africa. But anyway, so Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and his wife and some companions spend the stay there for 15 years. They came in year seven in Khaybar. So that's the seat. It means this is the da'wah and what they have from revelation. 
just this few revelations. The concepts, knowing Allah wa Taala, Qiyamul Layl, be good to people. That's it. That's what they have with them. What they have with them, I am Muslim. There's a big difference between Muslim, it means what does Muslim mean? And there's the hereafter and interpret everything in this. They have in their knowledge, if Allah tests me, I can interpret this in very well. They have in their knowledge, the relationship with others should be in the best way. And they have Qiyamul Layl and that strong relationship with Allah. Okay, now in the rest here for this 10 minutes, I will open the questions, inshallah. And next time, inshallah, we'll continue. Wallahu alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasulullah sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Alhamdulillah, as-salamu alaykum. Ya kallah, nawarti wa sharrafti. Ahlan wa sahlan. Bismillah. Why in that order? Number one, it, it comes from a few people stand before the falsehood till a leader go around the world. So it starts from a few people, grow up slowly. That awareness grow up till everyone in his job make that conversation. Till we have a tribulation a lot, so we understand the wisdom behind that. Till Allah give leader to this ummah and they spread this message around the world. Allah. Uh, Allah barak we, we we miss you for for few lessons. Um, He said that the that Dajjal doesn't mention in Quran, that's right. But there is also, we have two sources, Quran and Sunnah. Sunnah here divided to two types. There is an individual ahadith, and there is those ahadith which is so much that will become mutawatir, that will become it's something. If I find one hadith and another and another and another, I can't avoid this knowledge. One hadith only, yes, I can, maybe this is not authentic, even it is. But if I found a lot of hadith with different companions, that will lead me to, to accept this hadith. Because in, in, in aqaid, we go to the mutawatir hadith. Hadith al is not one companion or two companions or three companions. It's not in one book or two books or three books. That's a lot. So in this case, our methodology here to accept this hadith. Number two, there's no contradiction between what mentioned in the Jal and the Quran. If you go to this methodology also, if there's any contradiction, yes, now we look what's going on here. There's no contradiction here. So for the scholars of Islam, if this is the, the two conditions here in their methodology, they will accept this. And they will try to make that a shadow of this tafsir. Okay, that's a good question. A 14 years old boy, which is faced a lot of desires and temptations and all of this, is there any recommendation for a book which bring him back and make him love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Okay. Nowadays, reading especially religious books is very rare. I would say that the YouTube maybe is more, I mean, sometimes better than books for this generation. But I will give you the topic itself, what topic you should look for, either in books or YouTube. For these types, there's two types of knowledge. Number one is the names of Allah, 
And number two is the life of the Prophet You should focus on these two things. That will bring them, give them their identity. There's a series, 31 episodes in Masjid al-Furqan, Ustad Hisham Abu Yusuf. He has a series in about the names of Allah in English. It will, it will publish in book in a few months, inshallah. And that's a good series. You can show him or her that series, 31. And look at any series about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it will, should be short. There's a 30 episodes for Mufti Mank about the seerah, the life of Rasulullah sallallahu so that's 31, that's 30. These two types of knowledge is very important for our youth. The names of Allah and the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alaikum as It's not more testing. This is, a, this is a, an expression in Arabic. If you know something very big, like Dajjal, he will use that to pay your attention. It means you don't know this is, you treat it as insignificant. Rasulullah said this is very important. That's in Arabic, for example. But why this? Because it's about when you deal with Allah, wa ta'ala, the only thing Allah wants from you is to be sincere. If you be sincere in any act of worship, that's what Allah Taala wants from you, and He will accept that for you. But to mix that and be just okay, that's for Allah and that's for for the fame, that's for Allah and for the I want people to praise me, and that's dangerous because that's destroyed literally all your good deeds. So that's why He aware us about this. But but the expression is just. To, to pay attention for this. It doesn't mean it's it's more, yeah. Yes. Salam um, the, the story of the two gardens in the Suat as I said, it was like a conversation between two people. Is it actually two people or is it just narrated as a conversation between two people? It, it could be two people, yes. Yes. But it, it's in a form of dialogue to give us that, that meaning. Yes, and we will come to this special guest from Gold Bolton. Assalamu alaikum. You, how are you? MashaAllah, and special dressing, MashaAllah. I miss you so much. You grow up now, MashaAllah. Long time ago. Maybe two years or three years, SubhanAllah. Okay. Allahu alam wa sallallahu ala abdi wa rasulihi Sayyidina Muhammad.